In this exercise, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit about how we're passing information between functions in Python. And this is going to be pretty simplistic and not the way you would normally write a program, but it, do, it should do a good job explaining how we are sending information from one place to the other. So I'm sending in from main. Now main is usually organized to uh, use to organize the logic flow of the program because the fl logic flow in main will go from one step right to the next. And so I have this variable, which I've named average, and I'm not using it yet, and it's calling one, which is a function that doesn't return anything because I'm not done writing it. To define your functions, you need to use this def keyword that just says, hey, I'm a function, and the function name, and then you'll have either empty parentheses or if you're receiving information from another function or being called from another area, you'll have a place where you can have a list of arguments or parameters. Those words are frequently used interchangeably. But really what happens is when you declare variable, when you declare things here, they become variables. It's like defining a local variable. So I've got def1, this is function1, and I want it to, so I'm calling one from here and I'm passing it five values and they're passed in order. If I, it's going to be in the same order that the sequence is sent. So I could name them anything. I could name them Fred, Wilma, Barney, and notice how they're lighting up here as they're getting assigned. Now it's better to use logical names. It makes your program self-documenting. But here I would just do one, two, three, four, five, because I'm just listing what uh, representatives of the numbers that are coming in. Then your con function needs to have a colon and everything that's part of your function must be tabbed in. That's how Python knows it's still part of the function. Now it's still waiting for a return statement here. So I'm going to use the, the word av. I could use average again. Average is only active while we're in this function. That means it's in scope. But it's kind of confusing to use the same variable in two different places when they're not pointing at the exact same spot in memory. So I'm going to give it a different name so I know it's not the same variable. There's no confusion. If they have different names, I know they're pointing at different spots in memory, and that should make it clearer for anybody who comes back to maintain my program. Because realistically, in large commercial programs, people are going to come back and modify code all the time. So you want to be as logical as possible and document and use comments. So each function will typically get a comment. This function returns the average of five numbers. And I could be sending these in as numbers. I could be sending them in as variables. So I'm going to have average equals uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, all divided by 5, and this set of parentheses makes this really clear. Now I have to get that answer back so it's stored in this variable. So I do that with a return statement. So we return av. And now the value from here is here. And I've got to use this. I've got to do something with it. So I'm going to call something else. I'm going to pass average. So I'm going to call 2. And I'm just going to pass it average. Again, this is not really worthy of doing separate functions for. But it's just a demonstration to show how they work. So I've returned average. So I can take this and I can pass it to my third function def2, consider main your zero, we're counting programming, and here it's just going to get one thing. And again, I can use this variable name. I can. I'm going to. But it's not the same variable. Not the same. It's a copy of what's been stored here. So I'm, so I'm actually, I don't like using the same name, so I'm going to use average in. That makes it clearer that they're not the same variable. It has a copy of what's been there in average. And here, now I can just do something with that. And so that's now declared as a variable. This is a variable that's holding whatever was in here. So we're 
tossing or throwing to this, this is catching, however you want to think of it, but we get a copy of this and store it in this. And yes, you can use the same variable, but it's clearer to know that, there, or you can use the same variable name, it's not actually the same variable, um, because they point to two different places in memory. So it's clearer to use a different name. And then we need to do something with it. Print the average of your five numbers is. And then we would add and check to see if there's any errors here. Oh, shadow name. Oh, oh, I'm glad that error came up. Okay, so shadow error. I'm using a variable name that's the same as the function name. So I will call this function one. You can't have function two. Function two, function so what I did, and you'll see this is a shadow error, so I'm really glad it came up because this is confusing the first time you see it. What I did was I had a variable name that had the same name as a function name. That gives you a shadow error because the variable name is shadowing the function. So let's make sure I've gotten rid of all soft errors. Yep, got a hard return at the end of the program, all the way back to the beginning and Bingo, I should have a green check mark. Excellent. All right, so now let's run it. And this is something I have to be careful with because I had another program up before. I need to go back into run and make sure I'm selecting the correct program, which is functions. Oh, and yes, you also have to call main. Because what happens is when we load the program, all of your functions need to load because they have to exist before you can use them. So PyCharm is loading these functions from the top down. But with functions, we're really doing something that's pretty much um, approaching event driven programming. We could call these technically in any order. That's why we use main to organize the logic. But functions don't run until you call them. So we list all the functions first. This gets them loaded in the program. And then we have to, in this first column, actually call main to tell it to run. Now let's try it. There you go. That gives me the average. So what happens when it runs Everything loads, main calls the main method, we assign a variable named average, and we assign to it the results of function one. We pass a list of numbers to function one, which gets stored in the same order that they're passed. That's how it knows which one goes to which variable. And then we can use these, which are now variables in scope inside of this function. We can do some math with them, store it to a variable, and then we can return this, which is now stored in average. Again, it's a copy of this is stored in average. We can then use this variable and call function two and pass it a copy of what's stored in average. And so I've given it a new name, average in. We could have reused the average name, but they are two different variables. So it's better to use a different name because that makes it clearer. And then I have a typo here. Print the average of your five numbers is plus string average in. Now, we, I'm using the plus sign here. If I didn't use the plus sign, look at how this is formatted. I could have done a comma and put in average in. And this will work, but the formatting is going to be slightly different because it works in a different way. When you're using commas, you're just listing up different strings next to each other. When you use a plus sign, the strings join together and become one, spr one string. So it affects the spacing. Let's run it again. OK, so now it works pretty much the same way. We've got everything here except it's spelled correctly. And that's how we're working on passing variables back and forth.